campuses, my brothers and sisters. We've come to another Sabbath, and I just come to say what thus saith the Lord. I solicit your prayers. I ask that you pray with me and for me. I would like to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for this opportunity. I would like to thank my pastor, Pastor J. Malcolm Phipps, and all of my other brothers and sisters in the gospel ministry. I, want, I would like to reference some scriptures, and, but before I give you the scriptures, let us pray. Oh, gracious Father, I thank you for another day's journey. I thank you for another Sabbath. I thank you for this worship experience. I pray that some heart and soul and spirit is touched by your words, not mine. I pray that you hide me behind your cross. Now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And let the church say, amen. 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 It is good to be in the house of the Lord. It's nothing like being in his house. Uh, and I feel a little churchy right now. That's why I had to go down memory lane and think about some of the times when I stood and proclaimed his truth. And I always said, Lord, had me behind your cross. So here I stand, hiding behind his cross. We serve an awesome God. And my life is to represent him and to represent him. If you have your Bibles, reference these scriptures with me. The first one will be Galatians chapter 1, verse 16. And I'll be reading from the Amplified Version. And the word of God says, to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles as the good news, the way of salvation. I did not immediately consult with anyone for guidance regarding God's call and his revelation to me. The next scripture, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. And the word of God reads, I have been crucified with Christ. That is, in him I have shared his crucifixion. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith, by adhering to, relying on, and completely trusting in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. Next verse can be found in Philippians. Chapter 3, verse 10. And this, so that I may know him 
experientially, becoming more thoroughly acquainted with him, understanding the remarkable wonders of his person more completely, and in the same way, experience the power of his resurrection, which overflows and is active in believers, and that I may share the fellowship of his sufferings by being continually conformed inwardly into his likeness, even to his death, dying as he did. And my last scripture will be second Corinthians chapter 5, and this will be the meat of the message. And beginning at verse 17, the word of God reads, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is, grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as Savior, he is a new creature, reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition have passed away. Behold, new things have come, because spiritual awakening brings a new life. But all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, making us acceptable to him, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, so that by our example we might bring others to him. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's sins against them, but canceling them and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation, that is, restoration to favor with God. So we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making his appeal through us. We as Christ's representatives plead with you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. He made Christ who knew no sin, to judiciously be sin on our behalf, so that in him we would become the righteousness of God. That is, we would be made acceptable to him and placed in right relationship with him by his gracious, loving kindness. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, listening, and doing of his most holy and divine word. We know that Paul and Peter did a great work for God. They stood up and they spoke out. And God blessed them. They did not deserve, nor do we, what Jesus Christ did. We must give our utmost for his highest. Martin Luther King said, we all are all complicit with when we, are toler when we tolerate injustice. He said, it is not enough to say it will get better by and by. He said, each of us has a moral obligation to stand up, speak up, and speak out. As we know, we have been going through uh, a lot of controversy and chaos in this world, dealing with racism, uh, dealing with uh, death and loss. We lost two icons recently, John Lewis and C.T. Vivian, they were men of God that stood up, spoke up, and spoke out. So I would like to just continue and say that 
as we live this life. Let our lives matter. Let our lives stand for something. Because if not, we'll fall for anything. When you, are, when you see something that is not right, you must say something. You must do something. Democracy is not a state. It is an act. And each generation must do his part to help build what we call the beloved community. A nation and a world society at peace with itself. Ordinary people with extraordinary vision can redeem the soul of America by getting in what he and I call good trouble, necessary trouble, voting and participating in the democratic process is key. The vote is the most powerful nonviolent change agent you have in a de democratic society. You must use it because it is not guaranteed you can lose it, as we found out today how our president is trying to block the mail-in ballots. He's trying to cripple us. But God, you must also study and learn the lessons of history because humanity has been involved in this soul-wrenching, existential struggle for a very long time. People on every continent have stood in your shoes through decades and centuries before you. The truth does not change, and that is why the answers worked out long ago can help you find solutions to the challenges of our time now. Continue to build union between movements stretching across the globe because we must put away our willingness to profit from the exploitation of others. Though I may not be here with you on that day or tomorrow, I urge you to answer the highest calling of your heart and stand up for what you truly believe. In my life, I will try and do all I can to demonstrate that, I, that the way of peace, the way of love, the way of forgiveness and nonviolence is the more excellent way. Amen. Now it is our turn to let freedom ring. When historians pick up the pens to write the story of the 21st century, let them say that it was your generation as well as ours and others who laid down the heavy burdens of hate at last and that peace finally triumphed over violence, aggression, and war. So I say to you, walk with the spirit, brothers and sisters, and let the spirit of love, peace, and the power of his everlasting love be your guide. As it says in Psalm 119, 105, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. Staying in God's word keeps us in his will. My God who gives this patience and encouragement help you live in a complete harmony with each other, each with the attitude of Christ Jesus toward the other. Then all of you can join together with one voice, giving praise and glory to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We as Christians and as brothers and sisters in Christ, we're not perfect because we know that only Christ was perfect. 
but we can be consistent. Elijah asked for a double portion of Elijah's spirit. I came up with a formula after reading that, and it's two times two times two. Basically, two to the third power. We have two ears to listen. We have two eyes to see. We have two hands to pray. Two to the third power. When we do that, we also have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit with us. To God be the glory. So why not obey? Seek and know him. Follow the plan. Watch and pray. In Christ, the new coming. And that's been our pastor's message recently about watching and praying. And my other brother, Pastor Harvey, spoke a couple of weeks ago about surviving in devastating time during this time of COVID and 19 and racism. And then my other big brother in the ministry just last week asked the question, where is your faith? So see, saints, we must be in Christ because without Christ, we are nothing. Without Christ, we can do nothing. Keys to heaven gates are faith, love, obedience, and worship. And the acronym for that is flow. That's how you flow. That's how you stand. That's how you walk. That's how you talk. That's how you interact. That's how you communicate. Keeping your mind stayed on heaven. Keeping your mind stayed on Jesus. The heaven, like I said earlier, I, I feel churchy because I was brought up hearing great orators and great preachers preaching and sweating and, and, and calling out about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as I keep heaven on my mind, I look back at what the word of God says. He says, your traditions nullify my word. Some people say that's old fashioned, but so is water and bread. Thanks be to God for his holy living water and for his bread. The church is the pillar in the community. We stand and we're here for help, for light, for love, for direction, and instruction. Mothers and fathers, we must train up our children. Don't let them and their peers and school friends influence them before we have or the world. Because if we don't interact and talk with them and pray with them and teach them what thus saith the Lord, the devil and his imps sure will. So let's get their minds first. And it starts at home. They should see us reading and praying from the Bible. So it should be the introduced to them first so they will learn to read and pray and receive wisdom when they are faced as they get older with challenges, trouble, or hard times. Because they're going to get older, just as we are. And as Christians, as we get older, we should be getting better, and we should be giving our best. Amen? I say they took prayer out of school. They took the paddle out of school to help discipline them. And that's when trouble started. That's when, you know, it just went haywire. 
But again, we know what worked for us. Because when I was in school back then, you didn't want to go to the principal's office. You didn't want to go to some of those teachers' rooms because you knew if you got out of line, what was coming next? Amen? Trouble came, and it gets worse. Then it was taken out of the home because children started calling 911. Brothers and sisters, we must stand for Jesus. As the scriptures that I read, it first talked about being in Christ. And the next one talked about knowing Christ. So we must be in Christ and we must know him for ourselves. I say then, they and them, but it's really we and us, father and mothers. Let's bring holiness back. Let's keep heaven on our mind. Let's keep God first. Let's remember the cross. Let's remember Calvary, our robes, our crowns. Lay them at Jesus' feet. Let's know, let's bow before him. Remember the hymns and the old songs of Zion. Let his love, faithfulness, his righteousness, his purity lead us and show us the way to heaven. Because as we live this life, we must grow in faith. Not faith in our money, not faith in our position, not faith in this world. Because this world hates you. Because it hated him. But he loves you. And he died for you. And he gave his all for you. And we could never thank him or praise him enough. The new coming. Because if we in Christ, and we know, getting to know Christ, the new coming, as it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if any man, any creature, be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. So there's a process. There's a plan, a purpose, and a process. But after the plan, the purpose, and the process, the promise comes. You see, it was one Friday that my Lord and Savior went to Calvary for you, for me, and for this world. They stretched him wide. He hung his head. They pierced him in the side. The blood flowed. There's power in the blood. Nothing but the blood can save us, can heal us, can help us. We must trust in him, in what he did, and what he's doing now. Because without him, again, we are nothing, and we can do nothing. So be truthful, be faithful, be obedient, and just keep heaven on your mind. When you get in that bind and you get weary, and you don't know what to do, don't know what to say, don't know where to go, look up and trust him. And I promise you, he will lead you. He will never forsake you. He will never lie. My rock, my savior, my redeemer. Do you know him? Have you tried him? Has he ever done anything for you? It's personal. It's individual. So brothers and sisters, let's get back to his ways. Not the old ways, not the world ways, not our own ways, not our friends and family ways, but his way. Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. To God be the glory. 
We are his children. I know sometimes it sounds old fashioned, but I believe anything worth doing is worth doing well. God himself takes his time developing us. No instant success will do. He wants to put the quality in before the name goes out. A small beginning is just a prelude to a tremendous crescendo. At the finale, many of God's masterpieces were developed in small, obscure circumstances. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Trust and obey. That is the only way to reveal his son in me, as it says in Galatians 1.16, so that I might preach him among the Gentiles as the good news, the way of salvation. I did not immediately consult with anyone for guidance regarding God's call and his revelation to me. See, my brothers and sisters, he's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. So, Lord, continue to reveal to me what you would have me to do and say. And help me to continue to preach the unadulterated gospel to your people. Give me preaching power, teaching power, that souls may be saved and lives may be made new through being in you. Because it's not about us, but it's all about you. And as, as it also says in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. That is, in him, I have shared his crucifixion. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Because, see, my hands and my mind can't figure it all out. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in him, by adhering to and relying on and completely trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. So see, brothers and sisters, we can't even trust ourselves, but we can trust God. And as the Bible says, it is better to put your trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in man. And they tell me that is the very middle verse of the Bible, Psalm 118.8. In the very first verse in the Bible, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the very last verse of the Bible says, and may the grace of God be with you all. Amen. So brothers and sisters, it's about God. It's about reconciling to him. It's about changing our way of thinking. It's about trusting in him. It's about having that relationship with him that he may reveal to you his promises, his hopes, his plans, and his dreams for you. Because as it says in Jeremiah 29, 11, he knows the plans and the hope he has for you. A hope and a future. 
therefore, if anyone is in Christ that is grafted in and joined to him by faith in him as Savior, he is a new creature, reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, the previous moral, spiritual condition have passed away. Behold, new things have come. Because spiritual awakening brings a new life. But all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, making us acceptable to him, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So that by our example, we might bring others to him. See, we must be loving and forgiving, brothers and sisters. That is, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's sins against them, but canceling them. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, you got to cancel that wrong you did to somebody. Sometimes you have to give up your right for somebody else's wrong. Cancel the thing so that you can be reconciled to your brother or your sister. So that you can go on and progress in positiveness, in Christ, in kingdom living, in kingdom thinking, in kingdom acting. We must have a change of heart. And we must lay our burdens down. We must lay our anger down. We must lay our troubles down. And trust Christ and let Christ lead us and guide us. Amen. So as we cancel those wrongs we might have done to someone. The word of God says, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. That is restoration to favor with God. We want to be restored. We want to be restored in God. We want to get his favor because it's better to have favor with God than to have favor with man. We want his favor. It's his restora restoration that will give us that favor. So in closing, again, I say brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ. Only what you do for Christ will last as though God were making his appeal through us. We, as Christ's representatives, plead with you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. He made Christ, who knew no sin, to be judiciously sin on our behalf, so that in him we would become the righteousness of God. That is, we would be made acceptable to him and placed in right relationship with him by his gracious, loving kindness. There's no better place to be, brothers and sisters, than to be in his favor, than to be in right standing, and to be in his gracious, loving kindness. To God be the glory. So fight on, saints. Stand up and speak out. Reconcile to the world that you are born again. You are in this world. You live in this world, but you're not of this world because you've been born again because you're in Christ and you know him and he knows you and you are about your father's business. Kingdom minded, kingdom connection, kingdom heart. Let's keep heaven on our mind. Let's continue this road together. Let's bring the love, the peace, the harmony, the joy, and the forgiveness back to this mean, evil, sin-sick, broken world. We must be his change agents. We must be his representatives. In Christ, know him. And the promise is coming. We're going home.
So keep marching, saints. Keep speaking, saints. Keep loving. Keep the peace. Let Christ rest, rule, and abide in you. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. To God be the glory. Amen. And God bless. Happy Sabbath. Hallelujah. To God be the glory for the things he has done and the things he's doing right now and the things he's going to do. This too shall pass. I love you, but remember, God loves you more. We want to thank you for spending this time with us. And we ask that if you you were impressed to give your heart to Jesus, that you would at your earliest convenience send a note to the following address. Ephesus SDA Church, P.O. Box 201-119, San Antonio, Texas. You may return your tithe and offering to www.adventistgiving.org or you can mail it to the address that we just gave you, which is Ephesus SDA Church, PO Box 201-119, San Antonio, Texas, 78220. Again, may God richly bless you. We'll see you next week. Be looking on your email, your telephone line. There will be a prayer line beginning this Wednesday. You can call in. God bless you until next week.